name is Coach Eric Holtz, and this is my story. This is the reason that we are doing this podcast to help people through their journeys throughout baseball, softball, and life. I was born and raised in the Bronx, New York, and baseball was always the most important thing to me growing up. My dad, who got to actually see Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth play, was my biggest fan, and he passed away at 11 years old. At 11 years old, um, my best friend, my biggest mentor was gone, and baseball was the one thing that just kept me on the straight and narrow. The people in my life that were the best to me were some of my Little League coaches and guys that stayed in my life for so many years, Squeaky Acosta, Enrico Torres, Stan Bruder, and Howie Gould, Stan Jefferson, and Dave Lasky, guys that looked out for me after my father was gone to ensure that I would still be able to do the thing that I love most in my life. I played uh, at pretty high levels growing up. Um, I was outstanding in high school, but I wasn't a really good student and didn't have many options uh, as to where to play college baseball. I ended up going to the only school that I applied to, and uh, I was a kid from the Bronx, New York, going to school in Massachusetts. I was a little bit different. Uh, I had an earring and a full head of hair, if you could imagine. Um, and at a junior college, you're either a freshman or a senior, and uh, the manager, the, the head coach at Dean College, didn't like me a whole lot. Um, I was kind of different, like I said, being from the Bronx up at school in Massachusetts in 1984. And I never really got a, an opportunity to uh, show what I was capable of. Uh, unfortunately, I went from playing shortstop and, and, and hitting almost 600 my senior year in high school uh, to a pitcher only. And uh, tragically, uh, my college uh, career came to a screeching halt. Here's how that happened. Uh, a good friend of mine named Jeff Tischler uh, was killed on his 18th birthday in a tragic car accident on Queens Boulevard. Uh, 1984, uh, there were no cell phones. Nobody has a cell phone. So I left my coach uh, a note saying that I had an emergency at home and I had to get home for Jeff's funeral. When I got back to school on Sunday, all I was told was, Holt, you let my team down. You let the entire team down by leaving to go home and clean out your locker. You're done. Here I am, 18 years old. The one thing that's always been such a positive thing in my life, the one thing that just kept me going was taken away from me. Um, you know, I... I thought about calling my mom. What, what was my mother going to do? You know, in 1984, was she going to call the athletic director? Was she going to call the head coach? If he didn't want me, I was done. Uh, my college career ended before it even started, and I was 18 years old. It was, it was just an incredibly terrible time. I was angry. Uh, the one thing that I loved my whole life I felt was betraying me. Uh, baseball was taken away from me literally in one night. I probably didn't pick up a baseball again for about 20 years. Um, it wasn't until uh, I was coaching t-ball again and, and uh, I, I was throwing the ball around a little bit and a really good friend of mine named Bob Irachi said, hey, what do you think about going to Yankee Fantasy Camp? And I said, I had no idea what that was. And what that is, is you pay to go be a Yankee for a week. You're treated like a Yankee. You're coached by the ex-professionals, guys I had looked up to uh, growing up, guys like Ken Griffey and Mickey Rivers and Oscar Gamble uh, were, were my coaches. And while most people went down there to get autographs signed and, and, and autographed baseballs, I went down there to ball out, and uh, for me, it was just outstanding to be out on a baseball field again for the first time in 20 years. Um, guys are out there, uh, like I said, just kind of goofing around, and and you know, I'm 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 diving for balls and and um, you know, doing my thing. I'm hitting balls, you know, literally out of the stadium. I hadn't played in 20 years, and uh, you know, here my my childhood idols are asking me who are you and 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 where did you play and I said you know I, I haven't played since high school they couldn't believe it so I win the award for best hitter in camp 
Uh, I said to my friend Bob, man, that was so much fun. We go back again the, the, the next year, and um, again, I win the best hitter in camp. I'm probably throwing, you know, low to mid-80s at uh, 38 years old, um, just having the greatest time ever. And I said to Bob, you know, why don't we look for uh, something to do and, and, and an opportunity to play baseball? So we started uh, a men's baseball team, a 25 and over men's baseball team, uh, with a whole bunch of little league dads that, like me, hadn't played in 20, 25 years. Um, the first year was kind of tough. We were uh, getting beat up. But by year three, uh, for the next four years in a row, we won the championship. And, man, what a great time with a great bunch of guys. There was another guy on the team named Glenn Libell, who I actually uh, had grown up with in uh, Co-op City in the Bronx. And uh, Glenn comes to me and he says, hey, Holtz, there's a professional tryout in three weeks uh, for Israel baseball. And I said, Glenn, you know, there's no such thing as Israel baseball doesn't exist. And he said, I'm telling you, Holtz, I saw it in the New York Times. It's run by Dan Duquette. Dan Duquette's going to be the guy in charge of player development. And Dan Duquette, for people that didn't know, was the GM of the Red Sox before that. Uh, was out of baseball for a year or two, and, and Dan got involved uh, in Israel baseball. So Glenn says to me, Holtz, what's the worst thing that can happen? We'll go up there, we'll have a lot of fun, we'll have a pro tryout, and we'll come home. I mean, how bad is that? So I played a doubleheader on Sunday. We drove up to the Berkshires on Monday, and this was the first time at 40 years old um, I was in a pro tryout. I mean, this was a legit pro tryout. I did everything, you know, ran the 60, and at 40 years old, I ran like a 7-2, uh, took balls from the outfield, took balls from shortstop, and now it's time to hit, and I hit the ball real well, and we're having uh, what they call a controlled scrimmage game, and there's a kid probably like half my age on the mound, and uh, there's a bunch of scouts standing behind the, uh, the batting turtle, uh, Dan Duquette, a, a bunch of his scouts, uh, one from the Cardinals, one from the Cubs. And uh, first pitch, fastball down the middle, I look at it. Uh, second pitch, 0-1 uh, curveball, I look at it. Uh, I step out of the box and I say to the umpire, hey, 0-2, right? He goes, yeah, that's correct. I go, perfect. I got him right where I want him. Next pitch is a fastball in. I turn on it, hit a line drive to left field. I'm on first base. The pitcher's kind of shaking his head, like, who is this old guy? Barely even looks at me, so what do I do? I steal second. You see the scouts kind of talking to themselves and scratching their heads. Um, and I go on and have a couple more good at bats. And uh, the day's over. I walk up to these guys and I go, hey, thank you, man. This was a lot of fun. I mean, this was like some of the most fun I've ever had. And as I'm leaving, one of the guys grabs me and says, are you serious about this? And I go, why are you making me an offer? And he goes, are you serious about it? And I said, well, have your people call my people. Thank you so much, this was great. I get in the car, my, my buddy Glenn and I are driving back down south uh, to New York and I uh, call my wife and I said, babe, pack your bags, we're moving to Tel Aviv. And she said, Eric, are you out of your mind? There's no shot this has happened. I said, babe, this was so much fun. What a great time. And that was that. Again, I, I'm just looking forward to playing some more men's baseball. Well, six months later, um, I get a contract sent to me um, to be a player coach in a brand new league that's going to be taken off in Israel. Um, there are players from like 10 or 12 different countries, 120 players that are going to make up six teams, and I'm going to be player coach for one of them. Um, I had at that point about seven or eight years of coaching uh, experience at the college level. I was coaching at Manhattanville College and then Westchester Community College, and here I am, you know, at 41 years old, I'm going to be a rookie and, and, and get to go live in Israel and play professional baseball. I had the greatest team with the greatest guys, and we go wire to wire in first place. We win the championship, and it was just the most incredible experience of my life. Um, you know, I go from basically a nobody to everybody wants to talk to us and meet us and have autographs signed and pictures with babies and stuff like that. And 
and now it's time to go home, right? I, I, I lived this 10-week incredible journey, and it's time to go home. This is late 2007, and for about six years, nothing uh, gets me back to Israel. And, and uh, a, a buddy of mine who became like a little brother, who was my roommate, but played on a different team in Israel, Nate Fish, asked me if I would get involved with uh, him. He was going to be the head coach for Team USA in the Maccabi Games. I had no idea what the Maccabi Games were, but it was an incredible opportunity to go back to Israel. So I am the assistant coach with Nate Fish uh, on Team USA. Uh, we win the gold medal uh, with guys like Dean Kramer, who's now pitching for the Baltimore Orioles, um, and just a tremendous bunch of young men. Um, before I leave Israel in, in 2013, the people at Maccabi USA asked me if I'd be interested in uh, taking over as head coach in 2017. So, you know, that, there was no hesitation. I, I said yes right away. About a year or two goes by, and um, the people in Israel who I had met in 2007 found out I was coming back to uh, coach Team USA in 2017. And a gentleman by the name of Peter Kurz, who is the GM of Israel Baseball, asked me if I would meet with him in the city. Absolutely great guy. So I go into the city and, and we meet for breakfast. And uh, this is where the crazy part of this journey really starts. Uh, Peter asked me if I would think about taking over as the head coach of the Israel national team. Uh, I looked Peter right in the eye and I said, Peter, I didn't even know you had a national team. Tell me about it. What do we need to do? And he said, Holtz, listen, if all we do is win this, 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 and this, we could be in the Olympics. I said, Peter, that's the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life, but I'm in. So I go back to Israel in 2017 with Team USA. We win a gold medal on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I become the head coach of Team Israel. I have five days to train these guys. Uh, get to know them, meet them, uh, see what they can do for me on a baseball field. And uh, we head to Serbia. And there are pools. Uh, there's an A pool, a B pool, and a C pool. And Israel had never been out of the B pool. Uh, we had a bunch of injuries and a bunch of guys that were dinged up. With all this controversy, we still came in second place. So we did pretty well. We lost in the championship to Austria. Go back to Israel. I got two days to decompress after being away for six weeks from my family. And uh, I'm on the beach. My last day in Israel in Tel Aviv. And Peter says, I need to come see you. Peter comes out to the beach and says, Holtz, listen, the guys love you. Uh, would you come back and do this again? 2019. I just said, Peter, listen, I'd love to do this but we've got to get better. We got to figure out a way to get better guys and better baseball players. And luckily for me uh, and Team Israel, this was the first time that Team Israel made an incredible run in the World Baseball Classic in 2017. And based on them making a run, I believe they came in sixth in the World Baseball Classic in 2017. A lot of the guys that played on that team now became interested in possibly being on a team that would qualify for the Olympics. As crazy as that sounds, the difference between the World Baseball Classic and the Olympic team is World Baseball Classic, you just need to prove heritage. The Olympic team, you actually need to be, quote unquote, a citizen of that country. So you'd need to have a passport uh, representing that country. Many of our guys from the World Baseball Classic team, and they became citizens of Israel. Well, now it's 2019. 2019, I think we got a pretty good team, but again, I don't know these guys. We show up in Bulgaria, and we are pretty damn good. Um, we beat a bunch of good teams, including Greece and Ireland, Serbia, Bulgaria. We beat Russia twice uh, to win that side of b -pool. Now we have to go to Lithuania, and we have to play Lithuania two out of three on their home field. As Lithuania won their side of the pool, we take care of Lithuania uh, in two games straight. And for the first time in Israel baseball, we go from the B pool to the A pool. What an incredible accomplishment. We have about a week off, so we come home, and now we're heading to Germany. We're going to Germany to compete in the A pool. There are 12 teams in the A pool. The top five will make it to the Olympic qualifiers, right? 
here we are, people looking at us like the Jamaican bobsled team. Who are they? Why are they here? They're not that good. We play our first four games in Germany and win all four games, uh, culminating with an incredibly exciting win against Germany in Germany. That night, after beating Germany, uh, we go home back to the hotel and, and the coaches and I are talking a bunch. And we said, you know, based on numbers, based on math, we qualified right now for the five seed. At least we will be in the Olympic qualifiers as the five seed. Holy cow. Well, thank God for that because the next three games, we play Spain, coached by Luis Soho, ex New York Yankee, that just beats us up. I want to say it was like 16 to nine. The next day, we have the Netherlands. The Netherlands beat us up 13 to four. And for the last game, we play Italy in Germany, and Italy walks off on us in the bottom of the ninth inning and beats us 8-7. So here we are. We got out of the B pool. We're in the A pool for the first time. Win our first four games, but now we're limping into the Olympic qualifiers. But holy cow, we're here, right? Anything can happen. And this is what I talk to the guys about. If all of us believe in the same ideals and and we just band together there's nothing we can't do as a team this was a special group of guys our first game is against a team that just kicked our butts all over the place we play Spain and our ace at that point Joey Wagman uh, all he does is go out and throw a three nothing nine inning shutout against Spain so we take care of business the next day we have the Netherlands uh, John Muscott, whose arm was held together by KT tape, goes out and throws four and two thirds against the Netherlands. We beat the Netherlands four to one. Next day, we we are playing Italy in Italy, and uh, you know Italy obviously has home field advantage. They're a real good baseball team. Uh, the game is tied three three late. Uh, we call a uh, safety squeeze. Uh, first baseman bobbles the ball. We go on to score another five, and we beat Italy in Italy. Uh, the Czech Republic uh, got us back the next day, and, and we had beat them in Germany, but they just had our number that day. Here we are. We're sitting pretty. All we got to do is we got to take care of South Africa. We're about five minutes outside the stadium and uh, I'm not a big rah-rah guy when you're dealing with professional athletes, but uh, I stood up on the bus. I asked the bus driver to turn the music down, and I stand up and I say, hey, boys, if all we do is take care of our business today, we will leave the hotel as baseball players, and we will return as Olympians. And the bus goes crazy and guys are banging the roof and poor South Africa never knew what hit them. We actually end up gonging South Africa to be the first team in the world to qualify for the 2020 Olympics. Israel, who had never been out of the B pool, not only got to the A pool, got to the Olympic qualifier and was the first team to qualify for the 2020 Olympics. Can't believe it, holy cow, place is going crazy, guys going crazy. And then the craziest thing in the history of the world happens, COVID. The pandemic shuts down the 2020 Olympics. Everything that these guys had worked for for now, some of them four years, we don't know. The answer is, I don't know. I can't tell you what's gonna happen. We would have weekly, monthly Zoom calls just to make sure everybody was okay, is you know, your family okay, and checking in. But like baseball, we were controlling what we could control. We couldn't control what was going to happen. Luckily for us, we end up uh, getting to the Olympics. The Olympics are pushed back a year. And um, not only did we get there, we represented pretty well. We lost to Korea. Uh, in extra innings who had won uh, the Olympics the last time out. We lost to uh, the Dominican Republic uh, on a walk-off in the bottom of the night by a guy named Joey Batista. Uh, and we beat Mexico. We're the only uh, team sport in the history of Israel to ever win a game at the Olympics. And what an incredible journey uh, that was for me. For me, 
I'm using this platform to help every young male and female that I work with, every athlete that I work with to understand that nothing is impossible. Anything that you want to do that you put work in is possible if you don't give up on your dreams. I am blessed with the opportunity to have helped hundreds of kids set and achieve realistic goals, some in the big leagues, some through high school, some through college, but helping them through their journey, both on and off the field, helping them grow as people, helping them grow as individuals, teaching them about themselves, teaching them about overcoming obstacles is why I love what I do so much. It's why I love this game as much as I do. Everybody that works for me understands the passion that I bleed in doing this on a daily basis. Everybody is not putting on their cleats and going to end up playing for the New York Yankees. But I'll tell you what, what I try to do on a daily basis is instill that anything you want to be good at in this world takes hard work. There is no substitute for hard work, effort, attitude, and that will take you so much further than any sport you're going to play. Who you are, how you represent your family and yourself is so much more important to me than trophies, medals, and plaques because I believe in such an incredibly hard work ethic. I want every athlete here to understand what it takes. Parents in 2024 don't allow their kids to fail at anything. The only way we learn about ourselves is by failing. I can't get better if life is just easy for me. I need to figure out what I did wrong so that I can do something right. If I get knocked down seven times, I'm going to get up an eighth. But if I don't get knocked down at all, what's going to happen when I face adversity? I can't stand that in 2024, our parents don't let our kids fail. Everybody needs a trophy, everybody needs a plaque, everybody needs a medal. No, you came in third place. No, you struck out four times today. It was you, you sucked today. It wasn't the umpire, it wasn't your coach. It, it was you, it was your preparation. What are you gonna do to get better? Those are the questions that I need to ask on a daily basis to every athlete we work with because I'm not trying to just help them here in baseball and softball. Their journey, their career is going to be over. What's going to happen when they face adversity in a job? Maybe they'll be a surgeon. What's going to happen in the OR if I have to call an audible? And my parents have just protected me my whole life and never let me fail at anything. I need you to figure out who you are so when the lights turn on, you're able to do what you want to do. If I can help teach this and share this through some of these videos and some of these podcasts, then I have done my job and I've done my job well. I wanted everybody to get an understanding of who I was, why I'm doing this, and please go out, subscribe to 90feetaway.com and follow some of these journeys through our vision. Please go to our YouTube page and subscribe to 90 Feet Away podcast. Thank you for being here.